Have you tried spotlight colouring with ink blending? In this video, I show you how. Hello there, Michelle Short here with Terrific Tags with Michelle. Today I have a card to share with you using spotlight colouring with ink blending. So let's get started. I have a panel of Classic Crest 110 pound solar white cardstock in my Mini Misty and I'm taking the nostalgic floral stamp set and I'm going to stamp one of the images down onto the panel. The panel is four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches which is what my finished card size is going to be. I'm just arranging the stamp where I want it to go. I'm kind of going for it to be sort of in the middle kind of top half of the card. I can close the misty door to pick up that stamp and I'm going to ink it up really well with permanent black ink. This is a great ink that works with lots of different mediums and it's going to work well with the ink blending that I add on top. So I'm just going to stamp that down to start with, making sure to press down really well in the misty. And then I am going to stamp it twice so that I get a really nice dark impression with those black lines. So I can just press that down a second time. I'm then going to take one of the middle size of the terrific tags dies and I'm going to place that towards the top kind of centered mainly centered on that panel there and I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine so I've held that down with some low tack tape and then I'm going to pop out the tag and then I can also remove the tag die from that panel as well and I'm going to use both of them on my card today. I am going to pop out that little piece there in the tag and I want to make sure that I keep that safe. I have placed the tag onto a sticky mat to keep it in place while I do my ink blending on top and I'm using the Nostalgic Floral Simple Colouring Stencil Set to add the ink blending. This actually is just one stencil for this image and there's lots of different parts to the flower and the leaves on that one stencil. So I've placed the first part over where the stamping is and because I'm using that sticky mat it is actually holding the stencil in place but I am adding some satin masking tape just to block out any of the areas on the tag where I may accidentally get ink blending. I'm then going to add colour with the Rose Petal Mini Cube set. I absolutely love these pinks and I thought it would work really nicely for the flower. I'm starting off by using the small ink blending tool and I'm just focusing most of the colour on the inside of those petals. I want it to be quite nice and smooth. I personally prefer to work in layers so I like to work quite light to start with and then build up the colour as I go. I am using the three darkest shades in this collection of the crisp dye inks. I was originally going to start off with the lightest shade but I found that actually I could probably just get away with the three darkest. So I'm going in with the middle shade here which is purple wine. And then for the last shade which is cosmic berry I'm going to switch to a mini ink blending brush. This is so that I can get into the like really really center of the petals and sort of not have the color go too far across the petals. So just focusing most of that color towards the center and I am kind of blending out as I go. Any time that I move the blending brush away from the kind of screen that's I'm just kind of sort of getting rid of any of the excess ink off of the brush. I've just got into the habit of doing that but I find that I get a nice smooth blend that way and I don't get any harsh lines. So as the ink dries it will dry a little bit lighter and it will also dry a little bit smoother as well. So I can remove that satin masking tape and I'm going to reuse this multiple times. You can just wipe away the ink off of that tape. I always forget to do it and then I get my fingers in the ink, but never mind. 
and then I can lift off that stencil and you can see those first two petals there I think they look really pretty with those colors I am going to clean the stencil each time I use it so that I can move it around and not accidentally get any ink from the stencil onto the tag by accident so I've moved that stencil around for the next two petals and I'm just doing the exact same thing with the same three shades of ink. So starting off with my lightest, then going to the middle shade and then the darkest shade. Can lift off that stencil and then I can clean that and then I can go in with the last petal of that flower and again I'm just doing the same thing with those same three inks. And then for the center of the flower I'm using chamomile ink from the Golden Sunset Crisp Dye ink set and I didn't bother to mask off any of the areas for this one. I thought I would be okay just getting the ink in that center. So I can lift that off and then I can move on to the leaves. And because a lot of the tag is kind of visible and I didn't want to cover it all with that masking tape, I'm just using some scrap paper here just to cover that over. And then for the leaves, I'm using the Green Valley collection of inks. I absolutely love these colours. I think they're quite a vibrant green, but they seem to work really well with lots of different colours as well for, like, especially if you're doing florals like I am today, I often gravitate towards these greens for the leaves. So I thought I might just use the two lightest shades, but then I do grab the third one as well just to add a little bit of extra darkness just where the flower meets the leaves and then I can do the same thing for the leaves there at the bottom on the right hand side you don't see a huge amount of the leaves on this tag but then when I add the tag back onto the card you'll get the rest of the leaves and I think they look really pretty I did just decide to colour in the tag portion. I think it would look really nice to colour in the rest of the panel with maybe like greys or something like that. But I did decide to just do the tag today. So I've got that panel that I cut the tag from initially and I'm adding some glue tape onto the back of the panel. I want to make sure that I add enough glue tape so that it holds down really nicely onto my card base. And my card base is a finished size of four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. So I'm just lining those two up as best as possible. And then I can take my bone folder and then just make sure that I press down all of those edges really well. I did end up just cutting a slither off of the right hand side and also the bottom as, the, as well, just to make sure that I got that centered as best as possible. I'm popping in the tag here just so that I can see where I need to place the center of that hole in the tag. So I've got that tiny little piece there that has got a bit of the image on and so I want to make sure that I add that back in so I used a little bit of two-in-one precision glue pen for that just making sure that that's really well stuck down before I lift off that tag I've then cut an additional three tags from the same Classic Crest £110 Solar White cardstock and I'm going to adhere them all together using more of the glue tape. I could have used foam tape here but sometimes I quite like to kind of layer up the cardstock so that I get that same kind of dimension especially when it's a tag sort of in the middle of something like this. So then I can add some more glue tape onto the back of that piece and then I can pop that inside and it's just going to fit in like a puzzle piece. It's just making sure that that's really well stuck down. I'm going to bring in my bone folder again just to really push that down. 
I'm then going to add some twine through the top of the tag that I did the ink blending on. This isn't actually necessary, but I'm one of those people that I really don't like to have tags without something through the top. I don't know why, I just think they look a bit naked without something in there. If I'd done something like a rectangle or a circle or something like that, that would work really nicely and then obviously I wouldn't have to have the twine through the top, but I still think it looks quite nice just having that twine through the top of the tag as well. So I've just tied that in a bow at the front and then I can cut off those tails. And then I'm just making sure that that's going to line up really nicely and then I can add some more glue tape onto the back of that tag. And I want to make sure that I add a lot of that adhesive towards the top because that's where the twine is and I want to make sure that that sticks down really nicely. So I'm just using my tweezers here just to help me stick that down. And just going to take my time to make sure that that's really well lined up and then I can press that down. And then off camera I have stamped and heat embossed a sentiment from the Sentiment Strips stamp set. It's one of my favourite sets. I love all of the Sentiment Strips sets. And I'm adding some instant dimension foam tape onto the back of it. I can remove the backings off of that foam tape and then using my T-square ruler I'm just going to place that down onto the card. And then to finish off I'm going to take some of the black enamel dots from the Essential Black and White Enamel Dots set. And I can just add a few around that sentiment strip. I wasn't sure here where I was going to add the third one. I always like to add embellishments in odd numbers and I think it still would have looked quite pretty there but I decided to take one of the small ones instead and place it on top of the sentiment strip. So I can just place them lightly and then I can really press them down once I'm happy with the placement. And that's the card finished for today. You can see that I have got a little bit of dimension on the card but not a huge amount. And I really love how that spotlight colouring works with the ink blending. Like I said I think it would also look quite nice if I'd done the outside maybe like in some greys or something. But I do really love that pop of colour on that tag portion. Links to the products that I used will be listed in the description bar on YouTube and also over on the Autonew blog. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Hello there crafty friend Lydia here. Just popping in to say that you can get your daily dose of crafting tips, techniques and tutorials just like this by subscribing to the Autonew YouTube channel. All you need to do is click on that little bell up there and you will never miss a video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.